My name is Katinka, um, from Acne Duck Creations. You can find me at Acne Duck Creations, no, Acne Duck Create on Ravelry, on Instagram, um, on, as, as Acne Duck Creations on Facebook, and yes, that's all. I, oh yes, and then I've got a personal um, Instagram account that I'm actually more active on. It's Acne Duck One Katinka. So yes, I live in South Africa. <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> um, it's starting to get winter and not, when the seasons change, I'm actually looking outside because it's so beautiful outside. I put a little clip in afterwards and also these two dogs sleeping right there. I'm not going to show you now, I'll, show, I'll put a little clip in about that as well. So Malish is lying over there. She's my golden retriever hand-me-down dog and Zanatra is lying over there. He's my husky Malamut cross. Um, I found him running on the highway and he was an escape artist, but I think he was actually part of a puppy, uh, a puppy mill or maybe for dog fighting because the chain he had around his neck was very dodgy. So he's been with me nine years, almost nine years, and she's been with me four and a half years, and they're both about the same age. I also have two cats. He's, I'm checking over there because that's where Bubbles love to sleep, but I think they're outside at the moment hunting. Bubbles actually <laughs> brought up. I put it in at the end. He brought a mouse in the other day, came to call me, and I was busy sewing. Because, yes, I do sew a lot. I actually have a little shop that I sew. It's on my property that I sew for, and I sew for people. Um, and then I make stuff for myself. So he came to call me while I was sewing, and I was busy. So I got back. I hear this commotion in my bedroom. Got back. There's a little kitten sitting. It's not a kitten. It's actually a massive cat. So he's sitting there with his big, innocent eyes, and just the body of the mouse, like, literally chewed the head off and he's just looking like a little angel <laughs> so, yes i think bubbles is hunting sometimes he brings me snakes sometimes he brings me mice sometimes no he doesn't really catch birds so i'm very happy about that um we have a small little we call him shrewd he's like a mouse with a long nose and too cute and i get so sad when he catches them but you know it's nature pinky is a black and white one so bubbles is a big fluffy one with yellow ears and a yellow tail and Pinky is a black and white one. I raised her. Bubbles was from a hoarding situation. So when I am not sewing and or doing all these things, then I actually I volunteer with a local pet rescue and I raise kittens for them. I take in the neonatals. It's quite hard because sometimes they die and sometimes they get sick and you know all of that. But it's life. And so I do enjoy the process. I love it when they when I can hand them over to good homes. I'm actually very pedantic. I make sure I find them homes <laughs> because that way, sorry, move a bit. Because that way I can go and visit them. So yes, today this is my favorite mug. I found it at like a local restyle store. Store that like four in a, in a pack, and the one actually I was drinking out of it the other day, and it had like a whole crack around this this, and it was like leaking. So, but they've been lasting quite well, and they were quite inexpensive. So the one that was leaking. I actually drilled a hole in the bottom, planted some plants in and gave it for a birthday present for a friend. So yes, I'm drinking hibiscus tea. Um, I'm a bit stuffy this morning. I think it's my own fault. So, <laughs> I 
yesterday I went no day before I found my sister and she her name I'm not gonna say her name so I found my sister and I'm like chatting to her and saying stuff and next moment I heard this person was sounding a bit like they didn't know who I was or what I was going on about then I remember there's a lady in my village with the same name and she bakes cakes and I felt so stupid for phoning her that I actually said oh yes and by the way do you make cake but you know this one person can you maybe make a smaller cake because she makes the most amazing carrot cake you ever ate so I went ahead and I, I ordered carrot cake and I of course I had to eat the carrot cake a friend helped me to eat the carrot cake but I, I think I ate most of it so now I'm paying the price this morning it was flour I might wheat intolerant but i do find i get sinus when i eat it and there was milk and there was cottage cheese i'm totally lactose intolerant um i get so stuffy and runny nose and all of that but i still have ice cream so before i keep on rambling about my life let's start about knitting today so um i know some people call it oh, i've got a knitting podcast or i've got this podcast or that podcast well i almost want to say i've got a crafting podcast no a creating podcast let's call it like that because i think there's a whole diminishing when you call something a craft <laughs> so this hibiscus tea is really good i'm drinking it for the stuffiness and it helps for information and stuff i only have one finished project so this is another thing i've been thinking about i do look at all these other podcasts and everybody's always finishing all these things and i used to be like that but i had to make peace with the fact that I don't have time to knit really. If I'm lucky, I get six hours a week. If I'm lucky. Mostly, it's less. So, I do knit in my lunch, in my tea time. That's half an hour a week. And I don't always have, so I've got four tea times a week. But I don't always can use all of it because sometimes I have to do other things. And then I try to, at night before I go to bed, I knit a little bit. But I really don't have time otherwise because I, I have a job and I sew for people. And I've got animals and a garden and all of those things. And I need a lot. So sometimes you need to go with friends and walk on the beach. But I've got one finished object and I'm excited about it. It's the Mosa Island Shawl. It's actually a very nice pattern. It's one of those that's, you know, like the triangle like that. And then uh, I'm going to show it like this. So it's like that. The shape. So I didn't particularly want that shape. So I changed it. Uh, I can't stick to a problem. I really need to work on that. But I love the pattern. Oh, I'm showing you the wrong side. <laughs> I love the pattern repeats. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? So it's like little eyelets and then little waves. So what I did, it was supposed to finish like that. So I just put in short rows and added some stitches on the end. And now I have a shawl like this, which I really love. Because then I can go around and around and tie it back. And I love that it's not thick at the back because I find that interferes with your jackets and stuff. And yeah, yeah I've got a shawl. I really love it. The yarn. Oh, the yarn. I know there's a whole thing about and superwash and all of those things. But here in South Africa, you mostly can't even find it. So if I i'm able to find something i'm getting very excited so my friend lives in america she moved there a few years ago and she um oh, she's so sweet so obviously often she sends me this parcel so a while ago she, her mom was there and she phoned me and she said and i found her and i said listen i really want some linen yarn can i order some and then she said yeah that's fine so you can send it back with my mom so i ordered some linen yarn online and had it delivered at her place because i couldn't find 100 percent linen here which is actually quite sad because you know we are a warm country it's the winter if it's cold the coldest it will get where i live is about 45 maybe 40 if it's really cold degrees far enough far enough. so it's not that cold so, so in the parcel she sent me they were she sent me this so she asked me if I, what i wanted i said i wanted some sock, sock yarn so it is um 210 meters, 50% superwash merino, 25% Ryan made from bamboo, and 25% nylon. So I used this 
to make my shawl I used two skeins and this lift, lift was left over um, so it's not a lot but she sent me four so I've got enough for one or two pairs of socks I'll see because I find I use about a hundred meters per sock and it's 210 meters very excited so there's just one finished object but I love it and I'm very excited about it and I've also decided I'm going to stop actually giving myself beating myself up for not knitting more and not finishing more because I have to be realistic so while I'm at it talking about what she sent me <laughs> it was like Christmas so I ordered this and had it delivered at her house focus and look at that color isn't it beautiful it's not very thick it's lace weight uh, but I'm going to cheat <laughs> I'll do the lace part by, on the needle and the rest I'm going to do on my knitting machine so it's 100% linen and it gives you 500 meters and it's called Fibra Natural natural fine hand knitting yarn and i can't remember which company i got it from it's an online company so it says um 28 stitches by 36 rows u.s size 2.75 and yeah you can wash it at hand super fine machine wash tumble dryer no, i don't use tumble dryer so that's it but i love this color so a while ago I spoke about the whole process of actually having a, a sustainable wardrobe. So one of the things that I identified that I needed for my wardrobe was I needed jer jerseys or um, actually more like cardigans. Because I've got quite a few cardigans. There's some viscose cardigans that I really love. But the synthetic ones I've been getting rid of. So I have a few cotton cardigans. And it's also a case of, you know, a lot of people is like, oh, I want a total hand made wardrobe. And yes, I can do that. And because I've got the skills and I, it's really not something that's a problem but some things is it's actually more environmentally friendly if I buy it than to make it or it's it's affordable more affordable if I buy it than to make it so what I do look at is when I do buy like a cardigan or something um sometimes it's hand me down so I'm just looking at see where I'm going to put it up there no that's on the dress I want to show you so I'll just put it on the ground sometimes it's um Hand me down sometimes it's like a second hand store but sometimes i will go and i will look for a specific um, cardigan and then i will actually look for viscose or cotton or you can't find linen if you can find linen it's just so pricey so um that's that the other thing that was in this i ordered this one and i for the life of me cannot remember what it is No, it's not focusing really. Oh well. But I do like the color. I know there's linen in there. And if I remember right, there's alpaca maybe. I can't remember. I asked my friend to send me a label, but she just had a baby. So her life is a bit up tipsy turvy. Um but the color name is green olive. The color is reference lot is okay. Doesn't really make sense. But I do remember there was a lot on a roll like that. I think it was like um, 1,500 meters. So what I did is I got another one still in its packet and I will just use the two together because it's also lace weight but it's a bit thinner than the other one. So I will use the two together because that's another color that I really would love in my wardrobe. But then with the the, the yarn that I use for my shawl that's going to become socks, she also sent me some other sock yarn. So she sent me four of this. Oh no, no, oh there we go. And this is the color Tourmaline Stripes and 2018. Oh, 75% wool, 25% nylon. And I think I'm going to really love that. And so I've got four of these. I'm going to give two of them to my friend for her birthday because, like I said, we can't, you can't find it, but you struggle to find wool in South Africa well, there's number four there's number four um sock wool sock yarn and then she put it in this cute little bag 
Oh my gosh, isn't it sweet? I just love it. Now, I know it's from Joanne's. I've actually been to Joanne's. You guys are so lucky to have shops like that. Um, and everything, but I still love it. I'm using it as a knitting bag. And she also sent me a little pad measure. Look at that. Isn't it cute? And then, she knows I've got problems with my hands, and I do get sore sometimes, so I've got some compressor gloves. And these ones are so nice, especially when I knitted a lot of small needles and stuff, but the best. So I said to her I wanted, I needed some needles, and so what I did was I just like made little links and I sent her different links, but I didn't... I said, like, I want something like this, but if you can find it cheaper, because it was quite expensive. I'm not going to open it. Send me this. Look at this. Oh, I am so excited. So it's Chagu. And it's got all the sizes, except the really small sizes. So it's from U size 2 to U size 15. I would have liked, I'm actually looking, but I, I found out where I could find it, and it's only available... Um, not interchangeable if it's set, but I need actually um, a US size one. No, um, 2.75 millimeters. So I need a 2.2 2, 2 millimeter and a 2.25 millimeter because I use them a lot for my socks. I like using them. So, yes, I got an interchangeable set of Chago needles. Chago, Chago, I don't know how to pronounce it. But I'm so excited about that. I've actually taken it out and I immediately started knitting my sleeves for my jersey on that. So yes, let me show you how far I've gone with my jersey. I still love this. I decided to, um, so this one, I did start the back. But then I decided I actually want to do the back and the sleeves and everything in one. So I'm as far as I want to go. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Yes, and now I started with the sleeves. It's for the first time I'm doing two at a time sleeves, and you know what? This, I'm sure you know, but this um, what do you call this? Magic loop, magic loop. It's actually quite nice because you cannot you cannot knit it wrong. You know, if you try to put two two, if I I don't know other people, but if I put two needles on straight straight needles or two sleeves. Then I sometimes knit two on this one, two sleeve rows on this one, and not enough on the other one. And they always end up different lengths. And then I have to count the rows, and I hate that. So I've been just doing them two at a time. And you cannot, with this setup, you cannot knit two rows on the one and not two rows on the other one. So I am this far. And like I said, in the beginning it was like, oh, I need to do this faster. It's so irritating. But I had to make peace with the fact that I do not have that much time to knit and that's okay so my jersey is coming along the next thing that i'm working on still working on is my machine and hand knitted jersey i just take it out so when i'm tired of my other jersey i'm really trying to finish projects at the moment not to just knit and start new things but really to finish so i finish the sleeve on the machine i've got the second sleeve on the machine at the moment and um, I like that it's nice and long. And then I did the ribbing by hand. And so I sewed the shoulders together and I knitted the button band for this one. So this is the front and the back. And I think it's really going to be such a nice cardigan. So that's done. And now on the sides, I want some detail. And also because the machine is just that wide, and I'm, because the wool is so thin, the yarn is so thin, I actually need it to add some weight, or some width. So I'm doing some bands that I'm going to put on the side, which I'm quite excited about. Let's see if I can focus this. Here we go. The wool of the yarn is from, it's 100% merino, single ply. It's from Karoo Moon. They have such beautiful yarns. Um, she, they have a place 
where the hand spun is taking place i think i buy from them but this is like she will find a base and then she she's dying it so this yarn here for my jersey she also last year for my birthday my friends gave me knit bro interchangeable needles and they gave me some hand spun in this color but i didn't want the hand spun because it was uneven and i know it's nice sometimes but for for cables i find it doesn't really show the cable so nicely so i phoned her she said no that's fine bring back the ones you got and then we'll just change i'll, I'll dye you up a batch that in the color you want and she had this base i can't remember what the base is but it is so soft and squishy a friend of mine bought another one so it was like the last of the base that she had left over and she's not going to get more so a friend of mine bought another one and it's the same color basically but hers is completely different from mine it's not as squishy so she gave me she, she then then i ordered and I, I only got eight and i needed now i only got i think i got eight or six and i needed ten so i just ordered what i needed and she did that and i really love that color so while we add things that came my way my aunt sent me this oh, she's so sweet she lives in cape town and she's my, I'm not supposed to have that. Oh, let's see if I can get it to focus. I hope it hasn't been out of focus the whole time. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Sorry. So, and I, you're not supposed to have favorites. Don't tell my other aunts, but I have a favorite. And she lives in Cape Town. And she sent me, I, I opened it. She sent me this box. All of these goodies in there. So, and that's for the garden, but... I think I'm going to use it for other things. There's a little herb scissor. I think it's so cute. And it's nice and sharp. It's a bit rusted already. Because I live at the coast. And things rust here. And then she sent me some raffia. Hello bubbles. Come here. Bubbles. And some twine. So maybe I will use it in my garden, but I think I will use it for other things. And look at this, some ties for my plants. And then the best thing is all seasons bold stripes, soft, comfortable, water resistant fabric. Garden gloves. And they're so pretty. I think they are the most beautiful little things ever. Let me just open them up. I, don't, I, I decided I'll leave it until my podcast so they've been hanging around for almost a month but i refuse to open them until i podcast so i don't know if they're going to fit sorry it's bubbles bubbles complains there's no food in this dish oh, actually there's no fresh food in this dish oh they're still cute even though they're a bit short i don't think they're made for my size hands let's see medium i do have medium hands maybe they're just badly made Oh, I'm still going to use them. Because they're cute and pretty. So that came my way. So now I can stop killing my garden. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I have all these seedlings that came up all over my lawn. Because my lettuce decided to make seeds. And it just burst open. And now I've got lettuce growing instead of lawn. But... I don't care. Bubbles. Go. 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 He's not crying there because he wants me to come and give him food. Oh, he's a little fella. So the other thing I wanted to show you is remember last time I spoke about my dresses? While I finish it. This is the one. I love the buttons. And um, I just bought, uh, I can't remember which pattern I used. Uh, but I, I, I kind of like to use a pattern for a uh, for, just for a basic thing but i never follow the pattern and i never do it exactly as they, they do it and then i did some box pleats which i love and originally i put the most beautiful lace on the bottom but i had to take it off because it was getting ruined and it's antique and i thought no if i use it for something i need to actually make like a petticoat and not so long it won't be able to use with this dress but with other, some of my other dresses and just have it like ankle length <coughs> because this was a bit longer than ankle it's just past so it needs to be like mid mid calf almost 
Is it your cold scarf? I can't remember. But like on your shin, the, the petticoat. And this one is, was a bit long. But I love this dress. It is so beautiful on. And it's got pockets, always. The dress is not a dress if it doesn't have pockets. Are you still in focus? Yes, you are. Awesome. And then this is my tablecloth dress. <laughs> and I love it. So my other one was knee length. And of course, it's also got pockets. Always. And again, the box pleats. The thing of pleats, if this type of pleats is, if you gather things and you are a bit bigger than I am, I'm actually quite big at the moment, then it gives too much volume. So you can still have the width, but with box pleats, it actually doesn't look so much. And it just scales down and fits you perfectly. So just a plain bodice. I what did I do? Oh, the other dress. Remember that um, autumn dress I showed you last time? I just out of focus again. Mm, looks a bit like that. Oh, well. Well, anyway, that autumn dress I showed you last time, I unpicked it to redo the bodice. And then I used that as a pattern for this. So sometimes I will just draw up a pattern and go with that. But sometimes it's easier to just use what you have and make it from that. I did make the straps a bit narrow because that one's straps was a bit wide and I just binded it like that and that's it long it's long to my ankle do that you like that little ankle bone on the bottom it's still there and that's it just I think I actually used now I put my oh yeah I did I, <laughs> I was lazy the tablecloth was aimed so I just used the tablecloth aim for the bottom and I picked it there a little bit on the side seam and I sewed it. So yes, that's it. And that's my other dress. That's it for... Oh, I wanted to show you one more thing. Oh, this is still in the bag. I'm just going to leave it in the bag. Do you see this? Do you see this massive bag? This is Angora from the 80s. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Look at how fluffy it is. So there's a lot. I didn't wait. I don't know how many. I think it's about, I'm not going to lie. But there's lots. So what I'm planning is on my knitting machine to knit stripes. That's so 90s, eh? 80s, 90s Angora. Just knit this white. Um, just um, stocking it. And then I'm going to sew those stripes together. So the one will be stocking it and then turn it around and it will be the back side of stocking it. I can't remember what you call it. Um, pull side. So it will be knit side one stripe, pull side one stripe. And then it will make a nice stripy blanket because I just think this will be so nice. I don't like heavy blankets. And this will give you a nice soft warm blanket for winter. We are going into winter. So I need to finish my brown jersey so I can get going on this. I'm quite excited. And then I can have a blanket for my bed. I'm actually redoing my bedroom. I want to paint the walls grey. <laughs> and I was looking at buying paint. But I'm at this, I'm in this place of trying to do things with what I have. So I was scratching around in, the, in my garage. And I found a big 5 litre tin of paint with maybe a litre out. But it's bright yellow. The kitchen used to be bright yellow. So the people whose house we were renting from, they left the paint because the kitchen used to be bright yellow. So I looked at the paint and I thought, you know what? Yellow and blue gives you green. So I want like a green gray color. So I bought some blue tint and I bought some gray, some, some charcoal tint, charcoal tint. And you, you get the thing like, it looks like a, like a mixer, but it's like a strange round thing at the bottom that you used to mix paint. So you put it on your drill and then you just mix it until it's all mixed. And that's what I did. And it gave me like a, almost like a olive green paint so it's not exactly what i want yet so i'm going to get some more charcoal and i'm going to get some maybe some i think some purple i'm going to get this violet i'm going to get the violet and you know if it doesn't work it didn't cost me anything i mean the the tint is like 100 rands so far so i can't buy i can't buy paint for that and i'm just going to play until i like the color and if i don't like the color then then i'll save up and buy some paint but so I want my walls dark grey. <clears throat> and then 
I forgot the bedding already a while ago I actually bought some duvet, the duvet cover and the sheets and <clears throat> a friend gave me a set of sheets as well so it's also shades of grey and then another friend of my, mine crochets and she made me a mat it's just stuck no get it sorry <laughs> she made me a big round mat that I went to my bedroom and um yeah I'm getting there so as soon as I've, I'm starting I'll show you guys but for now I'm just going to leave it I've packed it all the way and I'm just leaving it packed away until I'm ready until I've done everything and then I'm going to have a new bedroom and especially for winter I need to get it done before the winter comes properly um because I really love the color gray at the moment actually I've always loved it so let's see thank you for visiting thank you for spending time with me I'm going to try to be more regular with these podcasts and hope to see you again next month. Bye. I love this book. So this is my baby cat. Okay. She is just so independent but so beautiful. <laughs> I forgot. I wanted to tell you about or oh, to speak to you about the whole thing of pricing. Um, so there's this whole thing at the moment about pricing for patterns and for all these different things. And I just sat down and I was actually listening to Sorry Somebody about the whole thing of pricing and how long it takes her to develop a pattern and in the end to work out a price and stuff. And I was quite um, appalled that people actually are even questioning her charging for her patterns. I mean, it's her intellectual property it's her work that went into it everything so there's no crap here my nose oh Becky hello tell you well thing <laughs> yeah so so then of course this is now the first time I heard about it and then I went and I looked and I, apparently it's really a thing about people saying oh but people are charging too much now I know I live in South Africa and we we our rand dollar exchange rate is falling so but to, to buy patterns, it is expensive. But I, if, if I find something I really like, then I'm going to buy that pattern because that designer worked on that pattern to design it, to write it up, to test it. And then I was also shocked to find out that people want to be, or well, some test knitters get paid. For me, test knitting is it's a privilege because, you know, I don't get access to a lot of patterns, so I love seeing how other people think. So by test knitting, what's wrong, Pinky? Sorry, <laughs> she wanted to go out. But by test knitting, I get exposure to patterns that I wouldn't usually get exposure to. So there's no way I would expect any designer to pay me in yarn or money or whatever for a test knit. So it made me think about a few things, and um, I was quite, uh, I almost want to say, taken aback by by how people think because I would never think like that but then what I realized was that there is a place where um, the Bible is very clear about it it says the labor is worth his due um, so yes I understand how people can think that but for me I don't think like that but then I started thinking about when I sew I mean I do a lot of um, commission sewing for people and a lot of times or yeah basically a lot of times I'm actually working for less than minimum wage in South Africa if you work out I mean if I do a wedding dress and you look at the amount of beading and the amount of handwork and the amount of time it takes me to make a wedding dress if I actually divide that by what I charge for the dress then I literally got less than minimum wage I would do better to go and work for minimum wage than to actually make these dresses and so a while ago I decided I'm not doing that anymore because you know it's my it's I don't have time even to sit and knit because I'm constantly working on these things and if I do not have time to do the things that I love then it needs to be worth my while to actually spend so much time in making something so this year what I did was um, I've literally doubled my price and some things I've tripled my price because I was if, if, uh, my, my thing was if you can go for a prom dress and you can pay thousands for your hair and makeup and thousands for the shoes and you want me to do a dress for you for in the hundreds then there's something wrong with the picture so I've just doubled my price and sometimes tripled and my attitude is that 
if you want me to make it then I'll make it for you at a price that's actually worth my while but otherwise I'll use that time to knit or to walk the dogs on the beach or to um, watch a movie because I got to a place where I had resentment towards my work because I never had time to do anything that I wanted to do for myself and it was just a case of this is actually not on because you know I felt almost guilty if I didn't work and and then I realized, but everybody else around me, they do other things as well. They, they, they have balance and I had no balance. So by the end of last year, I was really so frustrated with work and so frustrated with the amount of time that I had to put into it. And then I would make so little money out of it that it was almost not worth my while. And so what I would do is I would actually do it for free because I feel it's like an insult to actually let them pay me what they want to pay me. It's just not enough. So then I'd rather do it as a gift than as a as a um, charge for it. So I had a few situations like that last year, and I and I just got to the point of such resentment because I felt used and abused. And of course, if you feel used and abused, usually you allow people to use and abuse you. So that was a wake up call for me, and it just changed my whole thing. And one of the thing, my whole approach, almost. So one of the things that um, I really changed this year so far is. I, I'm not afraid to charge what a thing is worth. I'm not going to, I'm not going to abuse and charge tons more than what a thing is worth. I'm not here to m make money out of people overnight, but I need to charge what my work is worth. Otherwise, I am actually working backwards instead of forwards. And so since I've done that, it's changed my whole perspective in a, in a lot of things. And I got to a place where it's like I understand when people say that it's not worth their while and when I was younger I had I had quite strong opinions like oh you don't really want to work if you don't want to take any job that comes your way because I'm taking any job that's coming my way and I just realized that it's if you know what my time is valuable my my, my life is valuable my mental health is valuable my my health is valuable and Nobody else is going to come and pay for me to go and have a massage if I worked 15 hour days to try and finish a dress that firstly you didn't bring in material when you were supposed to. Secondly, you keep on changing your mind through the process and every time I have to start all over. And thirdly, you don't come to fit when you're supposed to fit. And then in the end, I am the one who's under stress and pressure and then I work for less than minimum wage. So... It got to a place where I had to reassess my approach to my work, to, to sewing and to everything else. And now I'm at a place where, I mean, when I started out with knitting, for example, I knitted jerseys for a place for 50 rand a jersey. And it would take me two to three weeks. I mean, it was less than minimum wage at that stage. And I just realized that I've set myself up all my working life not to ask what it's worth because i would what if people don't don't want to use me anymore or what if i don't get more work in and so this last year i had to make peace with the fact that people might not use me that's fine but in the end then that time i can use to make my own clothes for example or i can use it to go for a walk or and it's just given me so much more happiness almost i, I can i can truly say there's a place where I feel more at peace. I don't feel such resentment as I used to feel because I don't feel used and abused anymore and I had to put those boundaries down. And so I think with designers and the prices they charge, I find that most of them give discount codes when they, what I've seen, that they give discount codes when they, when they release a pattern. And when I do... So I make a point of actually seeing what designers are work my favorite designers are working on, and when they do release that pattern, I make I will buy it then. I won't buy it then. Wait for it. And sometimes I find all the patterns, and I'm lucky in the sense of I'm not going to just copy what somebody did, but I I can make my own patterns. I'm, I mean, that's not the issue. I've always done it. So for me, it's almost more of a hassle to use a pattern than to make a pattern up, but. I can make something similar if I feel like it, if I really can't afford the pattern. 
So I know for other people they're not that lucky, but what I found when I went to my library, there are so many knitting books. And all of those knitting books have patterns that's similar to the ones that's coming out at the moment. So if you are just a bit creative, you can use a pattern that's already out there and you can change it a little bit. Uh, it's Binky coming back. And maybe you don't have to have exactly the same pattern. I know this is whole thing about trending and I do want the designers to make money. But there's also a case of you need to work what's best for your budget. So in that case, if you cannot afford a pattern and you like a certain design, there's so many patterns out there. There's so many magazines in the libraries. You can actually just go and find patterns. And most patterns out there have been around for a long time. I looked for my granny's pattern in the collection recently because I was a lucky one to, got, to get them. And I was so amazed to see how many of those patterns are actually back into fashion. And some of them... I will change them a little bit because they're not exactly as I, I like them. But they give you the basic gist of things and you can take it from there. So yes, I thought I'll just put my two cents in on this topic. <laughs> and yeah, I hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, I'm now going to start working. I've got quite a lot of orders. I just took this morning some time out to sit and chat to you guys. And I'll see you again next month maybe sooner but i don't think so because i also need to be realistic my time is not always so much as i want it and to edit and to cut and to do all of that with a video it takes time and then also my internet is so slow it takes sometimes up to between 12 and 13 sometimes more hours to upload a video and then halfway through it just stops and then i have to start over so to upload, it's to make the video is not the problem. To upload the video can take me sometimes the whole weekend. And so I don't want that emotional stress all the time. So I just do this once a month. And I've realized also I'm not doing this so much for... I'm doing it for the few of you that follow me. And I love that you follow me. Thank you so much. But I'm doing it for me. Because like I said before, this is like a like a visual journal of my, my journey through creativity and for, through the whole process of making stuff and and um, not just how I think about stuff. And I know I'm going to look back on these and I do sometimes go and watch my old videos and I'm interested in how I was thinking at that stage and where am I now and what has happened in the meantime because you forget. And I used to be an avid journaler but I really just don't have time at the moment. So this is my journal. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Good morning. It's quite rainy, cold and misty today, but I've been working in the last week. I've made these for my shop. And then I've made these for my shop. Some navy ones and some black ones, but I don't think you can see them now. And these two are inside. Because it's a bit cold outside. And then, let's open up here. Because I'm trying to get more light in here. And even though it's a bit cold, I do think I want fresh air. It's my favorite thing. Oopsie, almost let you fall. It's fresh air when it's cold. Look at this. Listen to the birds. <laughs> 